again. Wasn't this amazing? Isn't this conference one of the most amazing metaphysical, spiritual, new paradigm gathering that's available on the planet? I come every year, have come for many, many years, and every year it's like a deep spiritual journey where I get what I need for my next level of what's coming through. I meet the right people, get the healing, and how fortunate you are to be here right now in a very intimate workshop that's going to happen with Ron Amatron. Thank you. And he's been one of the experts for many, many years in this field. I know Ron personally, and he's been on there working very hard to get the information out to you so you can understand what's happening with our alien contact. As you know, he's had a lot of experience and he's been teaching for many years so you can get your personal questions answered. And all this is escalating now because as you know, our awareness and our contact with our galactic brothers and spirits and sisters and all the other species out here is coming into the mass consciousness bit by bit. But you're on the forefront because you know this is real and this has been happening and I'm sure many of you have had contact and want to get your personal questions answered. So I welcome you, have a great experience, and I present the amazing Ron Amatron. Thank you. <laughs> so anybody have a question before we get started? We're, we're talking about abductions. so. Uh, Yeah, the anniversary date, yeah. So if you have anything going on uh, with abductions, you could have an anniversary date like every year with that situation. So you may want to check on that if, th if that's an occurrence that you can remember. Remember, all they do is copy and paste. And so in, in source energy, you, are, you use source energy to create your manifestations with. That's if you're in the present moment, okay? If you're not in the present moment, then you're using mind energy. So you have mind energy, which the aliens gave you, unfortunately. And uh, that's when you use your thoughts to create your, re your reality. That's when you're in uh, the law of cause and effect. That's your dream state. Uh, that's deja vu. Uh, many other things, you know. Then, then, then you're dealing with the battle of the minds. So you're doing psychic attacks on everybody. Another way of putting that, people don't really like to hear that because they're trying to find something out there, you know, and of course, who's the strongest mind gets it. In source energy, you don't have any battles of the minds. Uh, everything is uh, already done for you. You just manifest it in the present moment. So the darkness gave you the law of cause and effect and gave you timelines which brought you into being a multidimensional being. So you're everywhere. You can just think a thought and you're somewhere else because your thoughts will bring you there. When you're in the present moment, you don't have any thoughts. So I guess the bottom line is that if you don't think at all and you just use your spirit energy, one, well, you can come up here if you wanna. Okay, you, you can use your spirit energy to create your reality, and then you're using source energy. Otherwise, you're using mind energy. Yes? Uh, uh, what, what creates uh, the words that people speak? Uh, I mean, is it, is it an implant, or is it uh, a program, an ending implant, or, or is it a timeline program? Everything would be in a timeline. So you are being directed on timelines. Uh, when you go to school, they teach you how to do spells on people because you're using spelling, right? <laughs> Another way of looking at it. So you learned how to spell. And every word that you have, uh, and some are more important than others because they're used by more people, those words can hook you up. And I call that the alien keywords. So the biggest one people normally use is the word love. And so when you use the word love, that resonates with you somewhere in your body and you're connected to a timeline of love. Okay, so what I'll do is take out the, uh, you have L-O-V-E, I'll take out the vowels on love. So why don't you say love out loud? Okay, and then I'll take out the O, so let's take the O out. 
and now say it. Okay. Did it resonate with you as much as before? And I'll take out the E. There. Now it's just something that is just a word that you kind of made up, right? It doesn't resonate with you. And so they work with the vowels. Now some languages don't have vowels, but you know, since we have English and has vowels in it, it's one way they can catch you. So these keywords can bring you into a timeline reality. So if you think of the word money, right away, you're probably gonna think of maybe dollar bills as opposed to pennies, maybe, okay? And so I'll, I'll take, uh, so right away, your mind goes somewhere, and it's going to a timeline. It's going to a different movie set, we'll say, right, that they created. And so instantly, you're on that timeline of money. So you may think of maybe money as, you know, giving money as a deposit into a banking system. You might think of uh, a, a movie that you saw with lots and lots of money, maybe somebody robbing a bank and they got all these bags full of money, you know. So you're going to be on that timeline because all the timelines are real. Even though you may not think you're on that timeline, you're definitely going to be on it. So you want to get off these timelines. Now the more emotions you have with yourself on that situation or on the timeline or how it relates to you, the more they're going to do a copy and paste of that timeline to hold you captive and to take energy off of you. So what I'll do is, you can say the word money, and I'll clear that for you. So we have, uh, uh, I'll just do the O, so here we go. Releasing that energy, and now say it out loud. Okay, does it, is it still with you, or is it just a different, it's a different word then, right? That you don't have a mental impression of, of money. So before the, the word money meant something, and now it doesn't. So now you're not on that timeline because there's, there's no significance to it. So what, uh, let me see. Oh, okay, well, well the money's, yeah, that's, that's true, yeah. Uh, no, no, it wouldn't mean you have bad luck, no. But, but uh, you may not be able to draw it into your life if you took out the vowel out of the word money because what does that mean to you? You know, you could switch it over, maybe think that uh, a precious metal like gold or silver, right, would mean something, and then all of a sudden now you're going from paper money to something else. Uh, so I'll talk about the timelines. If you hurt yourself, okay, so they, they live off of you, or they want to steal from you your emotional energy, whether it's a, a really high where you're giggling and laughing or you're in depression and you're upset or angry. You know, it's, it's, it's all the same. Okay, emotions are, are just an energy. And then they also want you for a pain energy. And uh, everybody normally, I'd say probably maybe 90% of the people deal with emotional stuff. And then the other 10% might be in pain all the time. But e either way, they're taking your energy from you. So if you hurt yourself, and it depends on the degree of, of the pain that you have, uh, will determine how many timelines they create for you. So if it's just a slight pain, they may all oh, we'll just do 50 timelines and we'll call it quits. If you're kind of bleeding or whatever, or a really bad bruise, or maybe a broken bone or something, then it's like extreme. And now you're emitting tons of energy out of your body because you're crying and you're upset and you're going through you know, your past DNA stuff, okay? Let's just say you broke your arm and you, and you happen to know that it's not right by looking at it. So all of a sudden, you're tying into your DNA of your body from all your ancestors who had a broken arm and that's all now flooding to you. And so you're now grabbing all the DNA from the past, energizing that, and now you've got a tremendous force field around you. So the aliens will say, ah, oh, this person is really... Uh, good at putting out energy, but which they don't really care what happens to you. And they'll start copy and pasting that same event over and over again. So maybe you have a, a one minute event to where you were fine and then you tripped and fell and broke your arm and now your body's responding 
at that last minute, end of the minute, okay? So you have one minute of time that they really want to take you. And they just co keep copy and pasting that. And over and over again, you could be on a thousand timelines. So you're down here suffering, and you're still living those other timelines just like you did here, and they're taking the energy from you. Any questions? Uh, the future would be to get off of timelines, to, to, you know, regain, say, your sovereignty and to be uh, actually, you know, less thinking. So, are we on that path? Yeah, if you're here, you are, yes, uh-huh. Uh, well, there isn't that many humans here to be on that path. <laughs> and so... <laughs> What you have is you have the, the clones that are around. So this, I think, is like their boot camp. And they don't have a spirit in them. They don't emit an auric field. And so all of a sudden, uh, these clones are here just to learn how to live life. And they'll probably be abducted uh, and leave here at some point. You mean a lot of people on Earth? 95%. Most of the people on Earth do not have a soul? Yeah. So what happened in 2012, uh, around December 21st to the end of the year, the, the people uh, left. They got abducted, they left, and uh, naturally they had to be replaced. So the humans left, uh, probably went on to the uh, alien buffet tables, and then from there uh, the clones came in. So they looked like the people. Well, that was in 2012, Ascension, yeah, yeah, that's the dark side Ascension. So, you know, when I was out doing, you know, going to the different expos around that time, you know, they're talking about, uh, you may remember this, they're talking about the golden age is going to be, you know, like in 2013. Well, when I went to the expos in 2013, nobody talked about the golden age anymore. <laughs> you know, it was talked about in 2012, oh, the golden age is coming here, this is it. You know, all these wonderful things are going to be happening. And now the one people that were talking about that uh, sort of like didn't say much because it, it didn't really change, but they were clones. So a clone person uh, really uh, can't give directions. So, you know, if you went out here even and you asked somebody where some street was that's a block away who worked in this hotel, they would probably not know where it was, okay? Because they'll say, I don't live here. Well, yeah, you don't live here, you know? <laughs> and so... You know, uh, they can't really give change, and all they want to do from you is get information. So they act like you're, they're your good buddy, like you knew them for 10 years. What are you doing today? You know, uh, where are you going? And, and all, all these weird things. You wonder why this person's asking me all these kind of like personal questions. So when this first happened in, in uh, say, 2013, uh, I had a story from somebody uh, which was kind of unique. Uh, the person went into a coffee house to get coffee. So a brand new clone is in there. And uh, the clone was filling up the, uh, uh, the coffee pot, you know, making it new, fresh, right? And the person got a cup of coffee. And then the clone went back because it was used or, you know, he dumped it, the whole pot out <laughs> and started a new one to have fresh coffee. And then also, they had a sign up about we have fresh desserts or something, you know, daily fresh desserts. So the person says, well, do you, you know, looked on the counter and there's no desserts. They just go, well, do you have fresh desserts? They go, yeah, we have fresh desserts. Uh, where are they? Well, we have fresh desserts. <laughs> and so what happened, uh, uh, I, I would say probably the last uh, maybe five years at Christmas time back east, and probably also here is that uh, people would go into like a Walmart to do their Christmas shopping and there would be two to three hundred cars in the parking lot. They'd have a hard time figuring out where to park and they get a park and they, they walk maybe for ten minutes into the store and there's a dozen people shopping in the store. And the counter people are just talking to each other, the checkout people, because nobody's checking out. So all, all those clones got abducted to probably get reset for the new year 
and they probably got dropped in at different times. Maybe they did go into the store to buy something, but uh, at that moment, there was nobody there. Any of you had that same scenario going into a shopping center and there's lots of cars and you go, where are all the people? At your gym? Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, they all got taken. Remember, they stop time. So you could be concentrating on somebody. They can stop time, abduct, in, uh, abduct the person, and then erase your memory, go back a little bit, and you won't even know that you were looking at that person before. Start the film footage again, right, of what you're living, and you won't know that you even saw the person in their car, and now they're not there, you know, because before you saw them, and they're gone, and you just think the car was empty when you pulled up to park. Uh, the other thing that happens is what I call driving into the billboard. That's when you're driving your car and uh, you miss an off-ramp and you think it's your problem because you didn't pay attention. Remember, your body, is, your body has its own internal like programs running too. So if you're used to turning off at a given location, it's going to know to get over you know, in the right lane automatically, okay, because you're used to it, but they can turn that off also. So you're, you're approaching your off-ramp maybe a mile away and then they abduct you and you drive like into the billboard, we'll say, where you're seeing the cars on both sides of you still, but you're not on that freeway, but they make a, a holographic reality of that. And you see the different off-ramps and still cars, and you're seeing the other cars coming this way on the freeway, right? Just like it's normal. Then they drop you back down onto the freeway, you know, maybe five, ten miles past where you got to turn off. And then you wake up a little bit, and you go, wow, what happened here? Well, I missed my off-ramp. Uh, the other common thing is uh, doing a right-hand turn. This is real common, and, and you look to, look to your left. No cars are coming. Look to the right just to play it safe. And then you start to turn to the right, and all of a sudden there's a car right there ready to hit you, honking their horn at you. Or maybe you get in an accident. I was talking to one of the expos, and the person said, yeah, I got in an accident that way. So they just dropped the car in into your timeline, and you didn't look you know, enough typically, it happened to me, you know, one time, uh, you, know, you, you know, when you look down and you see like three blocks, nothing is there, you don't always double check, right, because you're used to not seeing a car there, but you want to always check twice. So I just looked once, nothing's there, and I started to pull out, and yep, there's the car, out of nowhere. So either you got dropped into their timeline, which would, in a sense, make you at fault, because you appeared, you know, in front of a car, or they came into your timeline. And then you have people who are out walking and all of a sudden you hear footsteps behind you or you know, in front of you, you see somebody that wasn't there before. Where did they come from? They just got dropped in also. Any questions? Uh, one of the road cameras. Are these orbs on timelines also? The orbs? Orbs, uh, well, orbs are here. Uh, they take your energy. Uh, I don't know what else they do, but they show up in pictures. Remember those um, orbs that we were looking at and we magnified them up and we could see the line in the mouth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you see yeah, if you see an orb, just uh, expand it out on your on your computer screen some way, and it'll be like a head. And they show up at different things, crop circles, and you know some healers have them show up, but they're just taking energy from you. So those are aliens that you know that are here because you can see them. Yes? And actually, earlier we, we kind of touched on cross circles a little bit when we were talking back here. What, what are they? Are they malevolent, benevolent? I don't know. I, I would stay away from them. <laughs> I wouldn't go visiting the, a crop circle. Because you don't know who made it, what made it. What, you know, what thing made it, and are they going to abduct you when you walk into the crop circle? Remember, a lot of them look, look really nice and fancy, and the grass is bent, bent perfectly around, you know, there's straw or whatever they use, and, it's, and you know, there's no damage to, you know, the straw. Uh, but what's really there, okay? Maybe it's a gigantic vortex to attract people and to trap them. 
No, but you don't know when you're abducted. That, that, that's the hardest thing. People think that they're here all the time. You know, with your eyes are open and you're seeing your reality, that that's all that's here. You close your eyes and then it could be scary. But no, with your eyes open, they can stop time. So you have, you have your sine wave, right? So you have a, a I'll say, say zero point on that straight line. So that's when time is off. Then you manifest on the top cycle, go to the next zero point, and then you manifest on the bottom cycle, and then you have another zero point. So you have three zero points for one cycle. And each time is where they can stop time for you. And you're all at diff different levels of that sine wave being moved in th the reality that you're seeing. So, any other questions? Yes? Who's doing the chemtrail? What's the purpose? <sighs> Chemtrails, uh, well, first of all, uh, well, number one, it, it'd be an alien thing happening to us. Okay? Now, it doesn't matter what group or government or military is doing it, it's still going to be an alien underlying energy, and they want to, you know, harm people here. So maybe the chemtrails are really good for clones. Maybe that's part of the nourishment. But for humans, it's damaging. In fact, what I'll do is take off the uh, clone skin on you. So just think of like dandruff, you know, in a sense you can, you, you can see that and you know what that's like. But, you know, you don't really see skin particles floating around. So what I'll do is take away the skin particles off of you right now from the clones that are here which is 95% of the population, if not more. Okay, and that, that clone skin is damaging to you. So here we go, taking this away. Okay, I'll count to 10, and then you can sample your body. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, and how does your skin feel? You wanna kinda like move it and just see if it feels Maybe a little different. Is breathing better? Okay. And interesting, the lady's wearing a mask. That's very good because you're probably yeah, yeah, but, but you're probably not taking in in the clone skin going into your lungs. Okay. So now we're going to work on your your breathing, your respiratory system. Okay, and your lungs. So. I'll just snap my fingers here, then I'll count to 10 so you can sample the energy. Okay, here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'll take a deep breath and just see if your breathing is slightly different. And I'll do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, any change? Uh-huh. You felt a sting leave you? Is that just so you had a little irritation or something? Yeah. So just remember, we're not alone here. <laughs> okay. Next next question. Anybody have one? Yes. I'm in the moment, so I just see things. So I'm explaining to you what I see. <laughs> you Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah, the stores are quite interesting, you know. And then sometimes, you know, the clones could bump into you in a store and not even really see you. Or you could be completely invisible to them also. <laughs> and so you, you could walk into a store and, you know, you're, you're maneuvering around everybody because you know, they have no body energy, so they may not even be able to, to detect you. Or maybe you don't even detect them. Some people use their sensory body to sample energies or empathic body. And so you know if this is good or bad, but with a clone, you're not going to be able to tell because they don't emit anything. They're different species. Yes? Now, what do you have on your website like, to do about all these things? Yeah, I've lost the clearings. <laughs> uh, do you know one that 
we, I have one out there that deals with clones. Uh, I can't recall which one it is, though, but it's one that has multiple uh, healings on it. Uh, I have lots of clearings that, okay, first of all, you have two different energies with you that, that's happening to you. You have what's internal, and that's your DNA, your ancestors' belief system, and why you look the way you look, okay? So that's internal energy. Then you have external, which is a psychic attack energies, the aliens uh, giving you energies to your body. Uh, energies from the planet that's coming in here from the aliens you know you can call that maybe like raising your vibration uh, some people talk about the vibration the planet is changing well that's external it may not even be you know changing at all but the aliens are trying to make the people think that they're going to go to a different dimension okay in source energy there's no dimensions you're just living you know, it's all light, There's, you know, otherwise it's in judgment. So source energy does not judge where you're living or what you're doing because it doesn't work that way. If it had to judge itself, then it wouldn't be light. So what we have is the aliens that are, were created by the light, like most people on the planet uh, years ago, and they chose darkness to do bad things, har to harm other people. Okay, and then uh, you have the aliens that don't have a spirit, not created by the light, and they live in darkness, but they want to have the light. So they see the light and they want to come into your reality or in, into the light sandbox, we'll say. If they stayed where they were, it'd be perfect, but they want to come in here to manipulate the light so they can steal the people's spirits, their souls, and their body parts and things and take it over to their reality and then do some type of manipulation on it and then bring it back into this reality and control it. And, yes? Why do the aliens keep coming here? Uh, well, first of all, we're, we're kind of new on the block and so the aliens have been here for a long time uh, and this is what I call the prison planet for us. Uh, I think this was an outpost planet and the aliens would bring all of their stolen merchandise here and bury it. Yeah, yeah like gold, yeah. And so there's different uh, energies here that, that, you know, they have stole away here or, you know, hidden. And then, and then somehow they brought people here, humans, and uh, then changed the way your spirit worked in your body and brought it into mind energy so you got separated before you would just think with your whole body with your spirit you had no chakra system you did have some type of energy lines we'll say much like your meridians in your body but it was light to connect everything together and then they slowly manipulated that and brought it into their darkness ag agenda and now you have meridians and you can find a problem in your body and, and help your body like through acupuncture and stuff working with that energy but really you shouldn't even have that everything should be perfect and so you always want to keep your crown chakra closed that's the gateway for them to connect to you all the spiritual books will tell you the complete opposite that that's your source energy coming into you but they're not realizing that the light of the darkness that they're calling source energy is not the real thing. So you want to, because you already have your spirit. And so once you have your spirit in your body, that's your source energy. Nothing ever comes to you externally. So when you start looking outside of yourself for something, then you're, you're going down the rat hole even further because you're having typical attunements done to you and you're trying to gain more light and do your mantras and w whatever you're doing out there with the, the New Age belief system to try to help yourself out to get out of here, but that puts you down the rat hole even further. That's why I have on my website a, a clearing which is a 2,000 year darkness barcode. So from the time of Jesus to now, they've been imprinting in you all these things so you won't ascend. They don't want you to get out of here. So that clearing has, uh, it goes I think every 100 years back to 2,000 years. And you can start clearing yourself out. 
and I have 16 clearings that, that are $10 for the month, and you can use all of those. One of them is, uh, is a gray sky clearing, which is very good if you have a, a problem coming, like a fire coming to your area. Uh, you know, we, we don't have tornadoes here or anything you know, like that, but people back east do, and they put it on, and their, their house is typically protected because they're running that clearing in their house, and it's just in their little remote area around the house. So I have lots of stories about that. And then I worked really hard on the, uh, the, the fires up in uh, uh, Northern California here, uh, the, the ones in Ojai. And so I actually saved the, the town of Ojai by, by putting in energy there to stop the fire from happening. So any, any uh, questions? Well, I don't have any past lives, okay? My last incarnation was in Jesus uh, 2,000 years ago as the healer in that body. There was many light beings in that body. So I'm a light being, so I don't live here. Uh, uh, I, I live here, I eat, you know, and I, I have, you know, problems like you have, you know, so I'm a human in a sense, but I don't have any energy that stays here. So I'm living on the planet, but I'm not of it, okay? So you're of the planet, which means that your body was made from the earth elements, where mine uh, probably has not been. So I would be, in a sense, like a projection uh, here. I don't have any real body energy. You can come up and sense me if you want, you know, or just put your hand out. And, you know, I'm here talking. I don't have any memory of the past. You know, after five minutes, for sure, I don't know what I talked about. You know, I'd have to really think hard or try to bring back a data stream to tell you what I talked about, some in the present moment. You have a normal parent. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was very hard on them <laughs> and hard on me trying to adjust here because things never would, would mesh. You know, when you're, when you're in source energy, you're used to manifesting instantly. And then you come here and you just can't do that because it doesn't work that way with source energy. Uh, you know, the, because there's not enough energy on the planet to, to uh, how do I say this here, to, to manifest instantly, because everything now is, is tainted with the darkness. So it's hard to go into the darkness energy to do a manifestation, although I can do that. My healings do that instantly. Do you have a normal childhood? I don't think it was normal, no. No, it wasn't normal. Uh, good. For me, going to school was very difficult. In fact, I'll, I'll show you where, where I live, okay? Do you have something that you can read in front of you? A piece of paper with words on it? So just get something. So it could be the program guide here or just uh, anything that you have that you, you, you want, want something with already words printed on it. So what I'm going to do is put you into my reality. Here we go. And I'll count. I have to command the energy so I count. Or I can snap my finger, but I'll just count so you can feel the energy shift a little bit. So here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. N now you're in my reality. And try to read the words on the piece of paper in front of you. Is it difficult to read the words? To have continuity from one word to the next? What's that? You can't read? <laughs> you have to pause, right? And so for me, it, connecting the dots is, is, is very difficult. And if I get emails, if I get more than 10 words, I can't read it. I just close out the email because it's just too long for me. Because I'm not retaining the first word when I hit the 10th word, okay? So what I'll do is uh, I'll bring you back one stage and I'll, I'll put you into where the timeline has stopped. So right now time has stopped for you. You're completely out of time. And if you think you may have some thoughts, 
Okay, maybe not, but you, you could have some. Anybody have any thoughts when you're thinking? Yes, <laughs> and so, so you're you're a complete peace. How does your body feel? Is it relaxed? Okay, so the, the thoughts that you had before kept you in uh, the duality and uh, the words that you had for thoughts, those key words brought you into situations, right? You understand? Like you have inside of your head, you have this uh, dictionary and you've got all these words that you're reading that's circling around, right? And they have a meaning that you know about and you're like, you, get, you go, wow, I'm thinking about 20 words here and that's pretty overwhelming. And then the definition has words in it. So right away you're like, you know, what am I doing? Because you're very confused. That makes sense to you? Okay. Yeah, I used to, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I did something uh, when I was younger, uh, a, young, a young boy had polio, and I really felt sorry for that person. You know, I don't know what I did, but, you know, this is probably uh, maybe 1950, uh, 52, 53, you know. So I don't know if I did anything to help with polio at that time or not. I, I have no clue. But anyway, th that was my major... Uh, 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 upsetness to see somebody in a wheelchair kind of deteriorating that you knew, you know. So anyway, I'll, I'll put you now back onto the timeline where time has stopped. So this will be the alien timeline, but it'll be stopped for you. And it'll be very similar to where you are now, but you're still going to be in time. And you're still going to probably feel almost identical. So here we go. There, now you're on the alien timeline at that zero point. So maybe, you know, I don't know what the difference is. It, I know it'll be very, very similar. And, and this is where, where you can go to. So when you do the mind to heart drop, uh, I'll just do that now, but I have to take you out of the mind to heart drop because if I gave you the mind to heart drop now, you'd be sitting there and you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. It'll go in one ear and out the other, we'll say, because you're not grabbing any information because you're at peace, and when you're in peace, you don't need any information. Source Center doesn't have any words. So, uh, the mind to heart drop, I'll tell you what it is, how it works, so you can understand. So you have to command your spirit, so you say, I now command my spirit. You could write it down if you wish. So I now command my spirit. The next part is to take the thoughts in my head. And then the next part is to drop them into my heart. It's very, very simple. Anything that's uh, of source energy, it's right direct from A to B. And if I could have shortened that phrase, I would have, but that seems to work for everybody, okay? And then you have to command the energy. So you're already woken up. You woke your spirit up because you're in the now. You ask your spirit to help you. So it's probably sleeping for a while, you know, and now, oh, oh, boy, what's happening here, you know? I finally get to get on board. And then you count from 10 to 1 backwards three times. So if you want to do that, we can. So we'll start, so say it with me. I now command my spirit to take the thoughts in my head, drop them into my heart. And now we'll do 10 to 1 backwards, but we're going to stop at 5. And for the sensitive people, you can actually feel your thoughts moving each time you count, like an elevator dropping down. So here we go. 10, 9, 8, seven, six, five, and now think. And you may find a lot of your thoughts in your throat area here, halfway between your head and your heart. And we'll continue on now. Five, four, three, two, one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And I'll try to think, and you won't be able to think, because you're at peace with, with no vocabulary. No alien keywords to connect you to timelines. So if I left you here right now, and I'm talking, the words will come to you, 
you really won't have your uh, dictionary to figure out what I'm saying, you know, working, you know, <laughs> and you're going to just be sitting here for a couple of hours, at, you know, just being at peace. So I'll just take you back and take you out of this here. So here we go. Now you're back to where you were before. And now you can understand what I'm talking about. So if you want to do the mind to heart drop, which I recommend, uh, do it maybe once an hour. And get a day planner because you're going to be stopped on the alien timeline, but all your friends and maybe where you're working is going to have that clock ticking. And if you're not in time, being controlled by time, then you may lose appointments or get people upset with you. Okay? Or get a little timer, you know. I gotta be here at so and so time and just set it. Do the mind to heart drop. And the more you do it, the longer you're gonna be able to stay in it. So at first, you know, maybe it's only a minute that you could be, you know, at peace with where time has stopped, and then somebody will wanna jar you or call you or bump you or something and th then you're going to be back in time with the timeline running, okay? And the more you do it, the more you're going to be able to, you know, in a sense, train yourself to stay there longer. A and as you do this more and more, uh, we'll just say that you did it for six months. At that point, we'll say, uh, you're going to be able to think without your mind, but you're going to be thinking with your spirit because you're overriding their system. You're out of out of their, their control. Remember, they want you when you're thinking. But when you work internally with your spirit, you, the thoughts are there, but it's not the same energy level or, or energy system. So you are all doing this when you become creative. When you're creative, then time stops for you. And you all know that because you all have been creative and maybe an hour or two of time goes by and you're doing something and, and then you, you know, you say in the flow of what you're doing and time has stopped. And then you're working with your spirit. So th this is not uncommon and, you know, to you. And you're still functional for that hour or two hours of time. So most people when you say, you know, not to think, they, they freak out really quickly. How do I do work? I, you know, I, I'm an accountant, you know, what do I do if I can't think, you know, well, you already have that information in you. You have to just switch over from darkness into light. And then as you start doing it more and more, you're going to be very peaceful. And the negative people in your life around you are going to vanish. Because they're not getting a charge off of you. And you may find yourself uh, uh, on the far end being lonely in a sense, but not. But you're going to be losing the people that you used to hang out with because you don't want to hear the dramas and traumas for them to put you onto their timeline. So like the 12-step programs, not that I'm saying that they're bad, but people go to them and they, you know, confess that they're, whether they're an alcoholic or whatever, you know, they're always an alcoholic, need this higher power, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you're going down the rat hole and everybody in that room is courting you with their stuff. So how do you get out of it? Where's the 13th step to get out of the situation? They don't have it. So they just keep you stuck in that location, in that consciousness. So when you do, when you do that, uh, mind a heart drop, you can just find out, well, I don't want to be with this person. They keep talking about the same drama and trauma every day when I go to lunch with them. And I don't need that. You know, I don't want to be on their timeline. Because when they start talking, you're on their timeline. And you're getting more gunked up by that experience that they're giving you. And now you're having that experience. Yes? That, that kind of answered my question. You said it's in the group. They're according to you, so you kind of get stuck. You get stuck. Yep. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. When you're, when you're in a group of people with the same mindset, mindset, right? <laughs> then you're in the timelines of all those people. So let's just say that you're dealing with uh, people who are, uh, you know, have been alcoholics, okay? Well, they all have memories of going to the bar or, you know, getting put in jail or whatever from their experience. Maybe they have, have a drunk driving thing against them and they hurt somebody, you know? But they all have that situation and that's shared to everybody because they're confessing that typically at some point to heal themselves, right? 
And that puts you into that timeline. Maybe that was your next occurrence on a timeline and you didn't go that far, but you're still wrapped up in all of their scenario on timelines. So you want to get, you want to extricate yourself. Yes? Oh yeah, oh yeah, then you have entities. So entities are emotional bodies of people that lived here. You all have an emotional body. And when your physical body dies, it does not die. So it's looking for a body to go into. And you can call that a ghost. And it normally will jump between family members because they know you. And so you could pick on, you can get the traits of one of your uh, uh, cousins or ancestors, for instance, that, that they had and you have it now because they hopped into you. So now you have two emotional bodies and, and that can take over your body at times. Or you pick up their addictions. Okay, so what I have on my website is a, if you know of somebody who just died, uh, I have a deceased loved one's clearing one is for their spirit to get their spirit out of here. And you want to do that probably within a week after they died. And then the other one is for the emotional body, which you can do any time. So if you find yourself doing some weird things, maybe a, a male died and you're a female. And one day you have, and they like smoking cigars. So one day you have, uh, you go, boy, there's some cigars here. I, I, I want to try a cigar, you know? Well, it's that male coming into you wanting to have a cigar and you do some weird things or you have their addictions or you pick up a different hobby that you never even thought you would have and you could be excellent at that hobby because they're in your body running you. Remember, your spirit is not that powerful to kick these things out. Okay, it's just it's going for the ride, doesn't judge anything. So the emotional bodies are, are very... Uh, uh, strong. It's sort of like, uh, you know, when you have a war going on, you know, you look at the soldiers fighting and they probably, well, they got brainwashed basically to kill some other race or some other people, right? And would they really do that normally? You know, if, if the soldiers were to have a night off and they put all their guns aside and they wanted to have a party with that, with their opponent, they'd have probably a great party. They'd probably like each other. And then the mind control comes in to kill them, and then that's why you have wars. And what happens in the wars is that you have uh, uh, people that you probably knew that died, and they come into you because they hate that other person out there, that other race of people will say, okay. And now these entities come into you because they got killed, and now that you have these things in you wanting to kill that other faction or other race of people. You know, your spirit wouldn't do that. So it's like the mind control stuff going on. Yeah, anybody who's human is not gonna wanna kill anything. Oh, yeah, I have an emotional, I have an entity clearing on my website. Yeah, there's a movie about what I'm talking about, sort of, there was uh, uh, somehow, I, I think it was a true story, but uh, you know, the Americans were, were here and I guess they went uh, with uh, the Germans, and they landed in German uh, territory during World War II, and uh, maybe there was four guys on each side, and in order to survive, they had to come together and to live, and they lived for like six months, they liked each other, and then uh, all of a sudden, I guess the Americans came to rescue the Americans, and they, you know, put the, the, the poor Germans that there was their friends now into concentration camps or something, you know? But uh, a regular human is not going to want to cause harm to anybody. It's the entities and the hatred. Yes? So you mentioned that after the birthday time of the week, and you have not done that period, so if you did, then what happens after that? They're still going around. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, so if somebody dies, we'll, we'll say that you're, you're sitting here and you go, yeah, you know, I remember, uh, you know, my uncle died, you know, 20 years ago. And how and I do get visions of him. Okay, I, I do remember him doing things with me. Uh, so that person's coming into your body, giving you the thoughts of being with you at that time. 
And so they're doing a visitation with you. And so, yeah, you, you, and sometimes it could be a real negative situation. They could say, you know, I, I planned this really nice day for you, you know, back on your birthday, and you didn't show up or something, and then you got the guilt because they're dead now, right? <laughs> and I should have come, but, you know, and, and the thing he's haunting to you because it wants to get your life force energy from you so it can stay alive. So that's w one of the problems. But, yeah, you, you can clear it any time you wish. I think it's $50 on my website. You go in there and just uh, look up deceased loved ones, and there's two clearings there. And, and you, you want to get rid of the, the people if they're haunting you. Yes? So is there emotional and spirit? Are there two, di two different things? Yeah, yeah your spirit is, is different. The spirit you want to get out of here as soon as you can. Uh, typically after a month, it might be very hard to have it released from the darkness. The darkness is going to want to take it to reincarnate the spirit over again. They don't care about the emotional body because they're already causing havoc. You know, if you go into an area, well, a lot of people talk about having their house built over a Native American burial ground, you know? And they have all kinds of weird things happening, you know, to their house and to them because they shouldn't be there, you know? Uh, I would think, in, uh, since we had you know, the, the war with uh, the Vietnamese you know, in Vietnam, it's probably just littered with all those people that got killed there in that little country. You know, probably go walking through, there's probably all kinds of entities around. You know? And then you have the, the, the pain and suffering of that entity coming into you, too, if you're walking through there. So you know, anything that deals with you know, devastation and, and wars is really, really bad. Especially like walking into a graveyard, you know. <laughs> yes. Why is it harder after a month to to get? get the because power? the darkness wants wants your wants that spirit to reincarnate, so it'll normally hang around to sort of visit family members during that process after the death during the between that and the funeral or the cre cremation, whatever happens. And the cremation is the best way to go because you're taking the energy out of the bones. You're destroying the bones so they can't attach to your bones. Very, very important. But, but the spirit will be taken, you know, we'll say within a month, into the white light tunnel or whatever, and it's processed now to go back to your soul family to start another life here on earth. And the spirit doesn't know the difference. Uh, that it shouldn't come here. Although you may know that uh, going down the birth canal, like, man, where am I going? This feels familiar. <laughs> you know, the highway to hell, you know? Yes? What if I die and nobody does this for me? How can I get out of here? Yeah, I have, yeah, yeah, I have a spirit barcode. So if you're listening to this here and you go, you know, I don't have any friends out there who's going go to go to my website because it's so uh, strange to them, you know. <laughs> and so you can do a spirit barcode. And you get the spirit barcode done, and you're guaranteed to leave. It's on your website. On my website, yeah. Just look up spirit barcode, and you're out of here. And you can do it for anybody. Or do the, uh, well, yeah, th th that'd be the safest way because, you know, if, you know, if somebody dies, say you die in 10 years, and a good friend of yours is still living, then they could be, you're not going to be around to do the uh, 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 deceased loved one clearing on them because you're not here. I had to figure these things out to how to save people from this planet from the reincarnation process, and that's what I came up with. Spirit barcode. And then you have a body barcode, uh, and, and that one would be one that how they track you. Yeah, it's an abduction barcode. It's also like a natal, natal barcode. Uh, and so that's what you put in where they're tracking you. So you put your name in, and then you probably have your married name if you changed it, and then you have your nickname, okay? And then from there you have different numbers, maybe uh, 
the house number that you grew up in with the address. You probably, you know, you have a social security number more than likely. Uh, different telephone numbers, license plate numbers. Remember, these are all things how they identify you because you're using that all the time even though you're not conscious of it. It's attached to you. So you get rid of these external attachments and then you have less interference. So on your natal barcode, that's sort of like the energy of your uh, natal chart or astrology of you because th they, they plan when you come here and what your life experiences are going to be. Now you also plan a little bit of that. So, so you know, maybe you decided to be uh, a, uh, uh, you wanted to work, you know, selling flowers or maybe you like making dresses or something, you know, sewing. So you, you go into a sew family that has that niche and then everybody in your sew family has that same niche and then you reincarnate each time looking for the DNA of the parents who would satisfy that for you. So you may have like 50 different talents that you have with you, but you just pick maybe one or two of those. And you resonate with those and it's wonderful because now you're quote, quote, doing your life path of, of sewing dresses or something, you know? Any questions? Yes. So once we've experienced these clearings, are they permanent? Yeah, they are permanent. Yes, they are permanent, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, what happens is you have uh, these energetic bodies around you. And so you have an emotional body, which everybody knows what that is. You know what your emotions. So this is an invisible body that's through you and around you. And the, the emotional body is the most needed one to be cleared. Okay? Uh, so what happens is when you're first born, those bodies are just energetic bodies that are empty. So just think of them as a trash can. And then as you hit the age of 10, you've already kind of ruined that body. You, you know, it got overfilled. And now that garbage is spilling back into you again because it can't protect you. So these bodies are put in place because the mind energy uh, of other people uh, through psychic attacks to you imprint you with that energy that they're sending out mentally and those bodies tend to buffer that from your physical body. So you have a emotional body, have a mental body, you have a trauma body, have a fear body, have a sensory body, and then the big pain body, right? So when you have pain, that one's activated. And then all your past pains may come into that same location because they have to try to balance out or they want to get out, but they come to that cut that you have in your hand, right? From all your other experiences and your ancestors' experiences. Uh, you have a uh, empathic body and a sensory body. And there's probably a few more, but those are the main ones. And so they get contaminated by the age of 10, typically. and that's where you're trapped. You have no, whatever you do, these things are activated. So you want to clean those out and that's what I have on my website. And what I have is the first one is, is regular price and the second one is half price. So you work both ways to, cl to clean yourself out. And when you go to the website, you're gonna look at it and probably become completely overwhelmed as you start looking at all the different clearings. A lot of them are put up because people needed more. I started off with uh, an emo emotional body, mental body, and then what I call it a sens sensory or sensory body, which is your past lives. And then I would do a four and one to connect you to your, your spirit. You're the half of you, your twin flame. So that was my initial clearings. Now when you go into the website, it's, it's like, you know, a thousand times that, okay? because there's so much that we discovered from other people and stuff that we had to add clearings on. And then I go back into seven generations. So we'll say that you do an emotional clearing 
and the clearing uh, typically I clear two, two uh, years of your life every minute. So you're looking at maybe a half an hour to do a clearing. And you feel great and then you start saying, gee, I have emotions here about something. And you could get a unlimited version, which I have, to keep you current, which is good to have. That's $50. So you do that so that, you know, you may not need it every day, but maybe once a week you may want to do it because somebody connected you to timelines or pushed your buttons, we'll say. And the buttons that they push are not the ones that were cleared. The cleared ones are gone. But they happen to find something that activated your DNA a little deeper. So, you know, if you, if you did the emotional clearing and you move to the hills and you don't have the TV, you don't have the DVD player, you know, you're out of touch with humans, you're good for life. Because, you know, unless a bear chases you or something and you get emotional, you know, but, but, but typically, you know, you're not going to have anything bothering you because nature is not going to push your buttons because you're living in, in complete peace. So, you, you, so anyway, so the unlimited version helps you keep current. And once you're cleared, a lot of times your friends don't want you to be cleared, so they'll figure out a way to push your buttons. But that's stuff that's under the iceberg, we'll say. You clear the top of the iceberg off. And then things will start to happen off and on below. And then you can go into the unlimited version. And if you really feel like you're stuck on something, then I have seven generational clearings. And so the first one is like one through seven. And that probably goes back to about the 1850s or something for seven generations. And that's kind of where your mindset is. Unless you go deeper, like being, you know, burned at the stake or something, you know, which may be before that or being set up with some torture chamber or something back in the middle, medieval days. But typically your life is very similar to what's happened, you know, say 150 years ago. You still had maybe a horse you know, for transportation and maybe a wagon that you rode and has wheels on it and your car has wheels, so you kind of relate to that. Anything probably past that, you're not going to relate to, so they're not going to be putting, they, the aliens aren't going to be putting energy into mileage and something to happen in the 1700s because who, you know, who cares about that time? It doesn't relate to us here. You know, maybe you're doing uh, metal forging or something, you know? In a, in a foundry or something, and you're not doing that today. You go out and you buy an axe or something, you know. You're not doing it yourself, so it doesn't relate to you. Yes? So when we're doing the, say, the seventh generational period, how does that, are we clearing our DNA? Or oh, yes, you are. Are the, the people whose lives were our ancestors? Or? Yeah, yeah, you could, you could be clearing them out of you. Because they brought you into those timelines, and the DNA is connected to timelines. So timelines are, are your are uh, timelines would be uh, parallel lifetimes to you. Okay, so so you you can use that term in interchangeably. So yeah, you you would be clearing them out of you, making that dormant, neutralizing it. And uh, the situations that they went through could be cleared also. And you are, uh, by doing so, you are clearing the timelines that they were attached to. Okay? But they're no longer living, but the timelines are still there. But it may not be affecting you, but it could be affecting somebody in your, in your family line, maybe your parents or something. Yes. I'm, like, I'm curious, like, how much are we free will and how much are we controlled by our DNA, our ancestry? I, I think the free will that you have is based upon uh, what they want you to be able to experience. And so your free will really, since, you, since you're in mind energy, your free will really isn't, isn't there because you're running the timelines from, from the past. And you just happen to pick maybe the more favorable outcome. 
So that's the sad part. Yes. Very possibly. And can you know if you're a uh, Probably not, because you're going to have the consciousness of what you have, and that consciousness can't analyze itself. You can't step out of yourself to look at yourself. But clones normally are the people that ask lots of questions. <laughs> okay. And and and, and so, oh well. So here we go. So one person went. Uh, what happened? Yeah, it, yeah. This they they mentioned this to me. Yeah, maybe on the radio show. That they went. Uh, okay, what I had uh, every year I do uh, a conference call where I bring in the energies of the next twelve months, and so those energies are typically what the darkness has has planned for us, because the light only works in the now. Okay. So I'm tapping into that energy so people can kind of navigate and manifest what they want to manifest in the proper month that it would be more conducive to do something in, okay? So uh, the person did this call, and I said, well, what you don't want to do is go into the year 2018 because 2018 is a new, a new reboot for the aliens to put everybody into a new timeline, Right? a new directive, a new way of controlling you for 2018, which is different than 2017. So I said, everybody, just when you, when you go into 2018, stay on, on December 31st for a few days or so or longer, and maybe after about four days, the aliens won't even recognize you because they already got their herd going down the track for 2018, and you're now in 2017, and you're going to be free of them for a while. Make sense to you? Okay. So the person uh, goes to the store to buy something, and the person said, did you have a great New Year celebration? What did you do? The person said, I didn't do anything. The clone got mad at him <laughs> for not doing anything, sort of scolding them. The guy, had to, the guy had to leave. The lady had to leave because it, the clone just went off. It wasn't in their program. They expected to hear something. Remember, they're running a program, and they wanted to, oh, you did this, you did that. I watched TV. I watched the New York mm -hmm. ball coming down, you know, et cetera. I didn't do anything. Huh? <laughs> you know? So. Yes? If I'm connected to something emotionally, does that mean I'm on that timeline? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so a, a, a past life will be something that happened uh, a millisecond ago or it could have happened, you know, 200 years ago. It's still timelines running. You become more real and you, be, and you have more free will because you're not controlled by things, yes. Yes, you would, yeah. Well, that's good. And you kind of like having that. It's like yeah, it's good. It's like a memory, or it's maybe it's a good timeline, and you just yeah, 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 yeah. As long as it's a great one for you, yeah. they're still getting energy from you. So, so a, 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 one person said, "I know they're going to get me, right? Regardless, whatever I do, they're going to get me. So, what I'm going to do is tell them that I only want to be ha having a happy timeline. I want to smile." And you can take all the energy you want off me. I don't want to have any dramas and traumas and, and heartache and upsets. So when, when that would start to come into their life, they go, oh, nope, you can't have that energy. You got to give me a happy timeline. Oh. And to them, it's the same thing. It's energy. Let them steal your happiness. You're still going to be happy. Oh, that's, that's a good one, yeah. So, so as you get switched out, you, sometimes they give you a, a, a dumb clone. You had that time when you, you wake up and you start to do something and you go, geez, I can't even add today, you know? And I just can't be functional because they gave you a clone replica that isn't very smart. 
So you can ask for a clone replica of you that is uh, smarter. So th this leads into uh, how much time do we have? Do you want to break for a few or? 12.15, so we've been here for what, a little bit over an hour? Yeah, were we about, about halfway through then? Yeah, if you want to break for a little bit? No? Okay, well, I'll just go on for a second here. So you're switched out every 10 minutes. Remember that sine wave? So sine wave is only this long. It's 10 minutes long for your life, okay? The master timeline for you. So every 10 minutes, you're controlled by a given alien race that owns your body's real estate, okay? And then another 10 minutes comes because they can stop time. You don't know about it. And when they stop that time, they have to recreate your physical body. Remember, all they have is like blueprints and holograms, right? They got to recreate you, make your hair look right, put the earrings on, you know, put the proper clothes on from the last race that had you because they're just handing over that baton of energy, okay? Uh, sometimes they can make you shorter or taller by mistake. You may not notice it, you might. Uh, and then you're, you're ready to go into the next occurrence for 10 minutes. And they're hoping that you have a situation going on, you know, of angry, being angry, sad, or hurting yourself. And then if that doesn't happen, then they lost out and another race gets you. Yes, Steve? Why do they think they can do that? I mean, aren't there like space police? Or, did they, <laughs> do they actually yeah, think they the own these bodies? Yeah. I mean, we think, I think I own this body, but I mean, did they create it and the, they, they, I, they just let me use it, but they own it? Or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They own your real estate, yeah, and, and they can manipulate it. Who created it? <laughs> Initially, yeah. you, you came here and you had to pick a body, and the body was probably a form created by the light. And through all this millions of years, they somehow adapted and came in here and corrupted stuff. And so that they do have that, they, they do hold your body uh, and they put the implants in you to control you. Which is, we'll just say, making it simple, your DNA. And so they know all about that and that's how they interface with you and the DNA naturally has problems because you don't know what what you thought this morning when you woke up you know typically and just think of all the thoughts you had yesterday that's stored in you in your cellular memory and then look at all of your ancestors going back to the get-go so you have all this stuff in you good bad and different okay and they can pinpoint one of those and bring it up into your current reality and, and copy and paste that. So that's the most uh, disturbing thing that I can think of is, is how they're controlling you. Because it's not, you know, it's in a sense it's not fair and you have to live within their reality. And, they, and then you're put into a caste system. And it's, it's sometimes hard to break out of that. Yes, Steve? No. <laughs> there was a time, like, I mean, there was, I, I, like, I seen a whole pile, I mean, a huge pile of, this was like exhausted, totally exhausted beings, souls that were like just piled up. They were like sucked dry. Okay, a, a, a whole, for the people on the, on the phone here, so he, he saw a, a pile of, uh, Beans, maybe humans that are sucked dry, Beans just like, like empty. empty. Just sucked and they were like piled up like waste. Waste yeah. products. Yeah, and they were like, it's, um, they were without hope in total despair. Mm hmm. <laughs> you don't want to end up like that. <laughs> well, I want to keep some energy. 
energy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably, that's probably why you want to get cremated. Because remember that they can go into bones. The aliens can go into the bones, uh, you know, in the graveyard and pick a piece off, you know, and re replicate you, right, from the DNA from the bone. Because that holds the history of you. Your bones carry that. And uh, that's why you want to have yourself cremated. So they could take you, you know, as you're all dressed up in the casket, right? You know, maybe you have a tie on and you look good, you know. Uh, and they can take that and reanimate that over again. Remember, they're, they're in control of time. You know, you've heard of like, you know, you know uh, hybrids you've heard of, right? Half human, half alien. Okay, and you've heard of, you know, uh, stuff being altered, you know, GMO stuff, right? Where they're changing the way it used to be into something else. Well, they can do the same thing with your body, and then also recreate it in their, uh, in their uh, clone factories and remake you over again. And they're doing that now with humans. You know, they're, they're talking about that, how you can pay money probably in stem cell research and all that stuff, you know, to youth. So just think what they're talking about now has probably been done for the last 100 years, and now they're letting out of the bag, bag for you to do, but it's already here. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and, um, they were like souls that were like sucked Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they have that. that that's, uh, that's why I did that spirit in the box clearing uh, maybe a year ago yeah. for people. Yeah, to, to, to re reclaim the parts of you that uh, was, was stolen. So, yes? So what special workshops have you got coming up? Uh, this weekend, Saturday, I have a... Uh, uh, one for your skeleton to rejuvenate the skeleton and the joints. Uh, and then the next weekend on Saturday, the cost is uh, $40 for the two, two events, uh, probably two, three hours in length, something like that. Uh, the next one, then after that will be, uh, I guess this weekend is, is the 17th, then be the 24th. That one will be with your uh, cartilage, uh, tendons, and ligaments. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a, d a double session for forty dollars. Yeah, can we go on a break, Ted, for fifteen? Okay. What I have is a uh, uh, hundred uh, U.S. I'll call them. Uh, 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 Elite, if you want to use that term, soldiers, okay, super soldiers. Uh, I have 50 Russians, and then I have some Chinese, and uh, uh, then I have the Vikings. So that what they'll do is, is they will tend to ward off energies around you because you're in their unit, we'll say. So if you start to have maybe a confrontation or one to be coming your way, they will buffer that away from you. It's quite interesting to watch. And you feel more powerful because you're out there fighting and you have no fear. <laughs> you know, so that back here that comes in and your, your persona sort of changes. Because you're, uh, you know, so if you're meek here and you enlisted, uh, instantly, you know, you're going to feel more empowered and you're gonna, your, your personality could, could change, <laughs> you know. But it, it's, uh, uh, you, you, you may have uh, some down time or maybe aches and pains once in a while if you were taken out, and, and then I'd rematerialize you. So normally most people will have a problem. You might get a bruise on your body or something. Uh, you know, that, that would go away pretty quickly. A couple of days, it'd be gone. You could be killed. That's a possibility. Uh, probably not too much now, but in the older days it would be. I've been doing this for probably six years, enlisting people. I stopped it for maybe a year, and then uh, somebody wanted me to do it at the expo here, so I did that. 
and we brought in the Vikings, which was nice. So the, the Vikings are the bodyguards of the light beings, so it's very nice to have the Vikings here. But the Vikings, all you do is say, I mean, the, the, the other groups, the Americans, et cetera, they, they'll kind of calculate what to do. They don't, they don't strike instantly. The Vikings, they're over there, we're gone. That's it. And they're out of time. They'll go into the ships, look at, you know, and be invisible, check everything out, materialize, and just start cutting off heads because they shouldn't be here. And there's no questions being asked. You know, they don't, you know, we, they don't say, well, you know, we'll give you a second chance. No, it's, it's like you're gone. So it's, uh, you know, once you kind of sense that and see that, and most people who want to be, and, and so once, uh, All are unmuted. okay, I'll hit the button again to mute. Okay, and, and so once, uh, lost my train of thought here. Uh, w once you understand that and, and you see what's going on, you're fearless, what you have as far as fear with you is gone. And most people have a couple of uh, maybe two or three bodyguards with them because they don't want you to get harmed here by anything. And if something starts to come your way, then everything appear, you know, comes around you. Your unit, other units, and you know, it's like you have this invisible force field that's uh, very, very strong. I know they have people living there. Uh, I went to Mars. I, I went to Mars, and I, I didn't. I went to Mars, and I ended up in some type of storage container. And I go, wait a minute, but but that was the uh, the the way that you go to Mars. So I I didn't go past Mar that storage container. I thought, is this is what they give you in Mars, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, uh, eight foot by twenty foot long storage container. But that was the actual portal opening. <laughs> So I, I didn't go past that, you know, I, I have viewed it and have seen, you know, life there and stuff, also on the back side of the moon. What's that? Cities. Cities, buildings. Buildings, buildings and everything, yeah. Just one alien race or many? Many. Really? Yeah. Is it, if you say you're the oh, sorry. Are they watching us from there or are they just doing their own thing? I think they're doing, doing their own thing. I think that's where the clones are going and they abduct people there and, uh, you know, just kind of weird, but that's, uh, I think they corrupted the planet so much here that they decided to look for life elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you are, we're down with the bones here. Probably, somewhat. Yes. Uh, I've only been there a few times. Uh, I just, I really can't remember too much. I know they they had uh, initially when we moved there, they had all the. It'd be like a nice day, and 15 minutes out of nowhere, you'd have these, you know brown, almost black clouds coming, you know, like, it looks like a hurricane's coming or something. They'd be there for like 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, then they'd just disappear. And then you had all those alien ships on the mountain, so we, I started hammering them away, getting, getting, you know, shooting at them and stuff, getting them out. Cause they're taking the energy off the mountain. So... Yes. You mentioned earlier on the website you have some clearance. So I, I just wanted to double check. So as far as the um, DNA from your parents, like like the white person having pressure, that does that, right? From the parents. Can you, can you answer her? Uh, yeah. Well, for physical condition, you want to timeline crash it. Okay. So you have a question. I mentioned you have any more. What is it called? 
timeline crashing, and then we have an, a, an advanced one, but, but that would work. Is it the skin one, skin aura? But yeah, I do have timeline crashing. You can go on the radio shows that we have and, uh, you know, input. So, so I do four shows a week. That's some expos and I don't, but uh, uh, you could input uh, it's CLS questions at Yahoo and you could input a question there and we'll answer it live on the show if, 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 the, if the host can get it. But I have a lot of clearings there to help you. So we will wait for Ted to come in to start the, you want to see if Ted's out there anywhere? Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Great. Okay. Perfect. Okay. The death barcode. So when you're first born, the aliens want you to leave here, right? Because you can't live forever. They don't want you to live forever because they set your body up for a, a certain time of death. So they put these death barcodes on you. So let's just say that uh, they, they, you know, they saw you, your, your DNA being created, right? And now you're, you're, you're a fetus, and now you're, you popped out. And they go, man, this, this baby is going to be pretty smart, and we don't want this baby to, you know, awaken a lot of people. And we're going to put a death barcode on that baby at the age of 20. So the barcode is, is there to kill you. Now, you, you can change the reality and not have a death barcode. So as you approach the death barcode, you're going to have a situation, an incident or something that could have taken your life. Okay? Uh, and it could be maybe driving your car, you know, and uh, maybe they set you up, you know, through a timeline, right? Numbed you out took you up and brought you down and you're now facing a, uh, an off-ramp, going up the off-ramp, right, to have a head-on collision and, you, you know, your car landed and you go, wait, I'm going the wrong way and you switched it. So you took control of your life and that would have been your death. Or maybe you're walking and you tripped or something with a bunch of people on the side of the road and there's cars going by and somebody grabbed you and pulled you back so you wouldn't get run over or whatever. So you missed that one. Uh, normally what happens on the death barcode, they want to let you know what's going to happen to you. So they may show you maybe three situations uh, before, and if you have three in a week, man, you better watch out, because that's on your doorstep. Three of a very similar accident. Yeah, so you better, yeah, timeline crash out and just take notice of what you're doing and maybe change the way you're driving your car, go a different route or something. Especially if you see, see like three accidents happening, you know, just uh, maybe have somebody else drive you, you know, or something. But anyway, uh, so most people have probably between, I'll say, three and a dozen death barcodes. And, you know, naturally, as you get older, you, you may get more put on you because they want you to leave. 
But when you do the first one, you get a lot of your energy back because when the death barcode hits you uh, or you just have a slight accident, they take out maybe a third of your energy out of you. And they start working with what I call the mind of your body, which is your internal healer. And they take the energy away from that. And so you start feeling, you know, with less energy. And then on, underneath all of that is depression. So they start the depression running on you. So, you know, uh, as you get older, we'll just say you probably know people who have some type of terminal illness or distant illness and maybe they're 80 and you know they're not gonna live to be 85, okay? And so they're 80 and they go to the hospital and they get all the bad news and they probably get hooked up with oxygen or something. Maybe they have a bottle they bring bringing around and they know that their, their life is kind of, you know, down the toilet a ways, you know? And uh, then they go to the hospital and things start happening and they, they lose hope. Then they get depression. And then at some point, you know, they die. And so, each time you have a death barcode, that sort of happens to you, but not with that intensity. And so if you had five death barcodes on you, you're probably down to maybe a third of your energy that you would have had without having them put on you because they want to weaken you each time, okay? So how do they find out? Oh, on the death barcodes, you just give me an email and ask how many you have. Oh. And then from there, I, I tell you, and you go on the website and you get the codes and then from there you, uh, uh, you, you first buy the clearing then email me and I'll tell you how many you have and then if you get the unlimited version of that th then you can do death barcodes on your uh, uh, stress death barcodes you can do depression death barcodes you can do barcodes on your house which is not listed yet, but it will be. You can do barcodes on your car. And then there's one other one that uh, we have on there, uh, fear death barcodes, I think. And I'll probably be populating the unlimited version with a few more things on it. Yes? Do you ever work with pets? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the pets, you can do clearings on your pets with the age. Or if you purchase a clearing for yourself, like the emotional clearing, which is what you start off with, then you can do an emotional clearing free for your pets. Okay? So whatever you do on yourself, you can transfer to, you know, your goldfish or the chicken out in the backyard or whatever. Uh, one lady is doing this uh, in New York, and she does horse rescue. And so she's done different clearings, and then she'll transfer that clearing onto her horses. And so since animals respond to healings much quicker than humans do, you know, maybe within a week, the, the, the whole energy has changed completely on that, you know, horse, we'll say, or, or, or animal that you're working with. Yes? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You can do a clearing for anybody, and you don't want, really want to tell them because you don't have to. The spirit always says yes, okay. And some people have tried to convince their friends after they had a few healings, and they feel much better. And then the friends look at the website, and it's not really their cup of tea, and they kind of don't want you to do anything to them. And you lose friends sometimes <laughs> trying to help them out so it's best just to stay doing it yourself and if you want to do it for somebody else you can just pay for them and do the clearing and we have the regular price half price so I made that mainly for for initially for uh, women who are married because they'll go in first and do it and then their husband will balk at the bed or think they're nuts but, but you know if they don't do the clearing then you're looking at it, having a divorce basically on down the road, you know, because they're not on the same page you are, and you're you're freed up, and they're still watching uh, the football game, drinking beer or something, you know, and they don't care, and you know, you changed your whole reality. Don't you encourage people to focus on themselves mostly? 
Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, first, just do yourself. You know, unless you have a, somebody who has a problem. Uh, if you have an older parent, I have a clearing, a clearing bundle. I think it's two hundred dollars for three months, and it's called the Body Jump Start. And I put everything in that bundle to help somebody who has maybe a chronic condition or a situation going on. Yeah, for them, yes, uh-huh. Putting in the time and the money. Yeah, yeah, it, it'd be for them, yeah. And then you you go to the website and you have different things you click on with a timer, and the timer then would would do a clearing for maybe an hour or something for that specific incident that you're they're clearing. And then you want to get a picture of them, maybe a more current picture, and put that in front of the, the screen because you're seeing a light beam, and that will project the light beam image and the energy of that clearing from the light beam into the photograph. It'll, it'll still work without it, but it's a lot easier doing it that way because you can actually feel the energy going from the screen to the photograph. And for children under a certain age, do you, is that the half price situation? Uh, it, it's for everybody. So it's just the yeah. pets? Pets are free. Yeah, yeah, the pets are, yeah. people, humans in it. Yeah. Under 17 or older, it's, it's the half price. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that light ship, Ron, you're in charge of a light ship? Yeah, yeah, I'm running energy uh, for you into into the clearing, yes. I mean, you're, you're getting source energy. You're managing the light ship. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm it. Okay. So whatever goes in the website or, you know, how many hits have we had? Do you remember we looked at it yesterday? Oh, it was like, I don't know, some 60,000 or 600,000. Around the world, you can scroll at the bottom on the left-hand side and it'll tell you a little map how many people around the world on the website. Yeah. I think a year ago it was like 600,000 hits on the website. Yes, Steve? Do um, cats have barcodes, Jeff barcodes? They could. They could, yes. So, Yes, yes, uh-huh. Okay, so the death barcode just shortens. Shortens your lifespan. Yes, uh-huh. Yes. Um, some healers say, like, there's karmic repercussions if you... Only in darkness. Only in darkness. Only what? Only in darkness. Do you have any kind of repercussion by interfering with somebody? Remember, you're looking at light, and light doesn't judge anything. And your spirit's created from light. And so your spirit needs help to heal your body. So to always say yes. Okay. So they, they're still making the choice. Because if they didn't want it, they would reject it. But then that well, yeah. 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 Initially, the mind might, you know, maybe your parents might say, I don't want you to do this for me. So their mind is telling them no. Their spirit's saying, yeah, I want to have this, but I can't talk loud enough. Okay. Because the mind over, overrides the spirit. So you go in and you do it, and they'll get the healing. Because that energy is, uh oh, can you see what happened there in the back? Okay, perfect. So, so yeah, it always will work. You know, there's no, it's not like it'll work only half as much, it's 100% when you have a clearing. <laughs> okay. Yes. So when the when I purchase that healing uh, for me, then I can do my past. Yes, that's correct. Uh huh. What is it called? Well, what, what you want to do, uh, you first want to do your emotional whole lifetime clearing. Okay. So there's maybe uh, I'll just say there's a dozen of those. You don't need probably all of them, okay. but you will need probably maybe four or five. Emotion. Yeah. So you first do the emotion, and then you do the mental. And then you do the fear. So everybody has those. No, no. And then reevaluate where you are. You know, what energy body is controlling you? Okay? So like if I, I use the word fear right now, there's probably some of you, yeah, yeah, I deal with fear a lot. You know, I know fear. Fear is my best friend, you know. So you want to get rid of the fear. Maybe you have anxiety. 
and maybe nobody else in here has anxiety, but you have it, so then you want to do that clearing. So you want to find out what energy body is controlling you. But the first three that you do is your emotional, mental, and fear. And then, and then reevaluate yourself and see, yeah, because, cause, yeah, and then you can do your pet or animal for whatever clearing you have done. Or you can just go in and do, do, do it for them. And, uh, you know, just to the, the, the clearing is $5 times your age. And then I get $50 discount for the expo here. And I cap it off at $300. The most it would be is $250. It's a one-time clearing. So you're not being codependent going back and back and back. It's, it's done. And, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes later, you're a different person. Yes, Steve? So you, you mentioned that um, some of these bodies generally get filled up by maybe age 10. Yes. So, and then there's spillover. Um, so uh, if one, somebody does a clearing, like on the fear body, let's say it got filled up by the time you're 10. Mm-hmm. It's emptied. Yep, completely emptied. Remember, it took another ten years before it gets filled up. Or then it's Hypothetically, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. But typically, once you cleared out your, remember, the dark side gave you your your birth plan of what you're going to do here, right? And they included the fear in it. Okay, and so for the first ten years, you're dealing in fear. Well, once you get rid of that fear, maybe there's no more energy and fear for you because you've already experienced all the fear because they wanted to traumatize you and fear for the rest of your life. So you do the clearing and it doesn't relate to you. In fact, what I'll do is, is take away your emotions. Okay? So, so you have an emotional body that's here to protect you. And so since we're in a safe room here, I'll just turn it off for you. You ready? So I'll do it slowly, I'll count to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. There we go. How does your body feel? More relaxed? So, so you should feel different. I'll, I'll turn off your mental body. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So how does that feel? Relief, right? For the, with both of those. <laughs> yeah. And so you have all this, all this underlying agendas going on that you know nothing about running in the background. Okay. I'll, I'll turn off, I'll just do each one of these here for you so you can see what it's like if you had the clearings on the website. Uh, so I'll do fear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll do anxiety. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I'll do pain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I'll do your sensory body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, empathic body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Okay, I'll do do your. Uh, looks like we had this turned off for some reason. Okay, so I'll do your. Uh, uh, feeling body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And did we do trauma yet? Yeah. Trauma. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so how's that feeling? How, how's your body doing? Are you more relaxed? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so, so think of an issue now to see if you have an issue of anything. Are you pretty much emptied out? Yeah. So, so. The, so remember, all those bodies bring you that agenda, and they overlap, okay? So, so some people, when they go to the website, maybe almost all of them, at first, they see all the clearings when they start looking around, and they get traumatized because there's so many of them, you know? 
and it's only because people needed them. You know, like I said, I only had like five clearings initially. And so once you do the emotional one, you probably lick maybe 80% of them, and they're gone. And then you see where you are, and you do the first three. You know, the emotional, the mental, and the fear. And so what you're looking at, those, uh, those energetic bodies are internal within you. This is your baggage, okay? Your DNA, your stuff is your baggage. I have clearings that work with the external stuff coming to you from the aliens, mind control patterns and stuff, and those also affect you. But you've got to clean the internal out for the ascension process. So the 16 free clearings that I have, or the $10 ones, I should say, on the website, it's, a, it's a, a bundle. And those are used to get rid of external things embarking you, coming to you. Yeah, it gets a little complicated here. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. The, the, uh, the new earth energy. The new earth energy is an energy that is here. For me, it's physical, but for you, it would be energetic. And this is where you will be going when you do the ascension process. So, ascension is either having your spirit leave here, off this prison planet, okay? And you're guaranteed that when you have the spirit barcode taken off of your spirit. Okay? And then it would have to be decontaminated in, in what I call quarantine. Okay? Because the light does not know darkness. And if darkness came into the light, it would be terminated. So you wouldn't want you to be terminated. <laughs> okay? So as you do clearings, I have what's called the, uh, I call it an earth transport clearing. And so you do a clearing and you enter that into the earth transport, just saying what the clearing was that you have done, which, which holds the clearing and your body parts and pieces that got decontaminated in that clearing. Okay? And then now you have part of you being saved and that goes to the new earth where your spirit resides. So we're living on the old earth here. So this is the original earth. Uh, I don't call it Gaia, okay? That's a whole different energy. So you're living on the old earth because there's duality here. The new earth is, is light, pure light. Yeah, I could bring it in because you're cleaned out. I don't know if you're going to feel much. Yeah. Yeah, so, so what I'll do is bring in the, the new earth energy here. And I don't know how it's going to feel, so at least for you anyway. So here we go. I'll count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There. It feels to me like it is, there's no friction to it. Like it goes between everybody here, and there's nothing for attachments. How do you perceive this? Clean? Clean and clear, yeah. There's no thought energy. It just is. Even between all of you. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, there's like a movement of, of the energy flowing around and it doesn't attach to you. It doesn't take anything away from you or add. It just allows you to be yourself. So what you're seeing is that manifestation energy of light flowing between you, waiting to be used for you to manifest into. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll see if I can help you out with that here. There we go, taking away some energy. There, is that any better? Uh, yeah, yes, okay. 
I, I need it to be a lot better, okay? So uh, on, on a number count, 10 being good, 1 being bad, what number is she? 10 is, 10 is good. 8, okay, so I'll give him a little more energy here. There we go. Moving you up to a 9. There we go, and see if I can get you to a 10. There, how does that feel? You feel better? Is it okay or you need a little more energy? Is it good for you? Okay, so uh, the reason why I did the number from 10 to 1 to see where she is, see some people have the belief of no pain, no gain, so they don't want to go to being freed up, okay? And I need to know if I need to help her out more for more energy. So I'm just putting out energy and I'm not judging or analyzing what I'm doing, okay? I know what I put there helped, but I don't know where she is with the energy coming to her. And so I need to get a reference. So when you do healings, uh, you know, with your monitor screen with the light being up and you request a healing, the light beams heal you instantly. But when you come back down here, remember, it's, it's a process of going to the light ship back and forth, beam me up Scotty a bunch of times, okay? And so what happens is when you uh, request a healing, it's done. But these energetic bodies that you have around you recontaminate you when you come back here. And maybe it was 100% decontamination, went to the light ship, maybe they took off 5%. Up there, they, they, I mean, they cleared you, but when you came back down, the energy had more life force energy than what it had, and maybe it took, you know, 5% here, we'll say. Then you request again, because they see you as a new person. They don't hang on to the past that they worked on you before, then you request again, maybe every 10 seconds or so, we'll say. And then you go up and they work on you like a brand new person. Remember, there's no history or her story for you because it's all in the now. And then you request again and they keep working with you. And it depends how much densities you have and how much you've worked on yourself by cleaning out those energetic bodies. That's why they're so important to get rid of. Otherwise, you keep contaminating yourself. So, any, any questions? Yes? It, it has a, so I'm kind of, I knew yesterday I went to the workshop and then also today, kind of this feeling of uh, it being dismal, like stuck here for a super long time, like, a, like it's a mistake. So, do you, is there any way to, is that, am I hearing this the way you understand it? Like, you made a bad choice, you didn't pay close attention, somehow you, like you said, you ended up in the wrong subway stop. Yeah, yeah, that's basically what happened to you guys. Somehow, or, or you've been here a long time and maybe you're just too peaceful. And that, that duality, you know, sign out there is moving. Oh, you can have great ecstasy and have all this depression and pain and you go, well, I don't know what pain is, you know, but I, I might want to feel better, I think. So you got yourself out of the process of being peaceful, being in the now, everything works for you. Maybe you wanted a challenge. You know, I don't know. <laughs> and then you bought that system or, or somebody bought it in your, in your ancestry because it's the DNA and you're living their experience. So you're living all the thoughts of your ancestors. So they made the decision for you. Okay, you happen to come in here you know, with that bus ticket, you know, and how great it was here. Maybe they showed you pictures of the earth and the dolphins, little guy out there with a sailboat and dolphins all around in the water. And you go, holy smokes, I'm going to go there, you know. And, and so you came here, and that does exist. But uh, you go, shit, what am I dealing with here, you know? I didn't know I, you know, I would be crying when I cut my finger. And I'm seeing this red stuff coming out, and it terrifies me, you know. So, you know, you came in here and you got stuck. And so your soul family, what happens is, you know, you, you come into your soul family and you go, man, 
you know, I'm supposed to leave. I, I, my last life, I left, and why am I here? And they go, well, you made a mistake. You stepped on that ant last, your last lifetime, and you killed an ant, and you go, oh, geez, what do I got to do now? Got to feed ants for my whole life, you know, <laughs> and protect them and everything else. And, and, and so you, whatever you do, you know, you have problems because you can never overcome your last lifetime because there's so many timelines out there of, of you messing up and doing things that, you know, put you further down the rat hole. And so you, in this time, uh, in our age, you know, we have that New Age movement uh, brought to us, I believe, by the CIA in the 70s. Okay, they started doing mind control transmissions. Oh, Archangel Monkley's on his way. Here, here comes Mother Mary, and they pick a subject, and they're now uh, channeling these things, you know. Information is great and good. And, uh, you know, maybe 100% correct. People are buying into it. Now we have the New Age movement. And, and that actually started back in the 1900s. Okay. With, uh, the, you know, I guess the Fillmore's and uh, Bar Mary Baker Eddy and all, the, all those New Age people, you know. Uh-huh. So it's, uh, then you have the alien influence coming through, which is, you know, everything else, probably the underlying thing with humans, uh, human suits over aliens to trap you here. So anyway, so you're here. So, you know, I'm trying to give you a solution because <laughs> you're, and most people when they find out that they're in that soup bowl and it's all negative and it's, you know, what I talk about may sound very negative, but I have solutions for you to get out of here. The other people typically doing what I'm doing as far as lecturing, they'll do all these attunements on you to bring in more light. Well, you can't bring in more light because that's going to be the light of the darkness. Okay, because you already have light. It's your spirit. You got to find it. You have to communicate with it. It's already with you. You know, it never left you. But trying to bring in more stuff will cloud what you have inside of you. You go further down the rat hole. Yes. So what's the ideal for somebody who, I mean, hears your lecture and wants to get cleaned out, wants to ascend? So what do you, what do you recommend? I mean, like, what's the ideal? Uh, ideal would be to clean out your energetic bodies and get those cleaned out so that you don't have any more buttons that are pushed by other people. Uh, so what I say, what you could do to see how far along you are with, with your clearings, we'll say, getting stuff out of you, is you know, go to the shopping mall and try to judge people as you're walking. Go to the food court and just see you know, if uh, this person has some weird hair you know, coming up here or whatever, or one earring or a lot of tattoos on or they have different color shoes. You know, whatever the judgment is for you because you're judging what your DNA has in it that's activated that you may have been that person sometime else, okay? So we'll just say you see somebody with one earring and you see that and you go, oh, well, that's, you know, I'm judging that. Well, maybe, they, maybe you lived that life but you had two earrings and somebody tied that earring onto a chain so you couldn't move, you know? And now you're seeing them with only one earring and you think, oh, man, I remember that because I tore my earlobe off to get free, you know? But, but you don't really understand that, okay? Or maybe you see tattoos on somebody. In fact, I did a tattoo healing on two people. Uh, they came through, and uh, the person, I think, was Mexican, and he had all these tattoos on. He had a short sleeve shirt on. And I said, you want me to release the pain out of your tattoos from when you got the tattoos? And he looked at me and goes, yeah, if you, if you can do that. And so I did it on his two arms. And I said, do you have anything on the front? He goes, yeah, I got it all on my chest. And I did his chest. And how about, I said, how about your back? Did his back. And then his other friend, I only saw some on one arm, and I did that. And he goes, wow, it feels great. So I took away the pain that he had in his body, which he knew nothing about because he thought it was gone. And he'll probably have better arm movements now and everything else. He's, he's not traumatized. So what you see in somebody else goes really, really deep. Or you watch a movie. And normally you have movies that you want to see, and some you may not want to watch at all. But that's because that's a problem that you have inside of yourself. When I watch movies, I just kind of watch it to see what's happening. Okay? But you do see movies where people in the movie theaters are watching, and they're jerking around, you know, or, or they put their... You know, you know, they cover their head because it's too scary, you know, with something, you know. 
uh, but they're jerking around and they're jerking because they know that experience. So as you do more clearing, you're going to see something physically or sense it and it'll just go right through your body. Been there, done that, I know about that, I'm cleared out of it and it's gone. And then you're just enjoying what you're seeing. Yeah, it's spill, spill over to the physical? In, into the physical. Or yeah, yeah, it's contaminated with all that stuff, so you want to get that energy off of you. So you want to clean out those energetic bodies. So when you clean out an energetic body, does it clean out the spillover? Yes, it, it'll clean you out also. So it cleans the, the trash can, the, that body, and it also cleans out what is attached inside of that trash can, the garbage inside of you, and then you're cleared. And then you start over again, but typically it would take a long time to, to, to get that body uh, contaminated over again. You know, if you're, say you're 50, it took you 50 years and it's still spilling over, but once you clean out everything by doing the clearing at 50, you don't have, there's nothing there to really clean out. What will happen is somebody will push one of your buttons that's in that iceberg underneath, you know, and they may find something or try to draw you back into a situation that they're used to having you in. And then you do the unlimited and you clear it. It takes a minute to do. And then you're free of that. And you're always uh, being in balance without having the negativity and you know, the trauma or whatever involved with it, because the emotions will kill you. So that, that's why you want to get that body done first. So for you being pregnant, if you did the emotional clearing, it would also clear the emotions of your fetus. Okay? And then what I would also do is uh, do a, uh, a birth trauma clearing for you and the, and the baby. Okay? Maybe do that after a couple of weeks and then your child won't be having all this stuff going on with it and don't get it vaccinated if you can possibly avoid that some way you know cause that, that's gonna cause problems you know not, not that it may it will okay maybe pay some doctor to say they did it <laughs> you know anyway you never know you know but uh, any questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, last year you mentioned uh, I should be, and I was surprised when you said this because how could you know that I'm from Austria? I should uh, be in more contact with the Austrian military. Okay. And of course, I did it. I did not know how many percent I should do it in the trial level, how many percent on the physical level. So I did both. Uh, things changed, of course. We got a much better Minister of Defense just recently, but I hope. still don't know how much priority is attached to it. And on Saturday, this Saturday, you mentioned also you would enlist. Uh, yeah, I, I will enlist people. Okay. So I was just going to bring that one up. So if you want to. Uh, uh, be a time traveling soldier. I'll, I'll describe how that works. So we'll go back in time. So most of you here are, uh, you know, familiar with, you know, maybe the Vietnam War or the one, you know, Iraqi War. Uh, there's probably other wars, but those are what we deal with. Okay. So what the, what happens is somebody there would go back in time when they were in boot camp. So we'll just say we're we're now going to revisit. Uh, the Vietnam War, we'll say uh, 1968, okay? So we're going back to 1968, and maybe the soldiers are in boot camp. And, th th and this could also, since we're in the Vietnam War, this would also be for the Vietnamese and the, the, the U.S. that are fighting, okay? So we would say, do you want to, uh, we'd stop time and transport those people that know how to fight because they're trained to fight into the future and then rematerialize them at their current age. And now, you know, 
they're probably going to be friends because there's no opposition there. And then we train them how to use uh, light weapons. I'll just use the word lasers to make it sound simple. And you learn how to fly in, in ships, UFOs, and you go out and you battle the aliens. But you're out of time and you're invisible. So the aliens that come here are just out of our physical uh, uh, seeing reality. So we can't see them, but they're here. Okay? And so when they start to come in here to invade the planet, we're there automatically to head them off. And if they start to shoot at us or something, then we can terminate them. That's the way it works. They, they have to strike first. Okay, so. Uh, and then at that point, at some point, those people that went time traveled into the future when they stop doing this, they'll just come back to wherever they were. If they had like, you know, their glass of water in their hand, getting a drink, time was frozen, we'll bring them back to that exact time and uh, they will then begin their life doing that mission, okay? Whatever they're doing at that time, okay? And, and so th th that's the way it works. So with you, you could be with your since you're, you're younger in a sense, right? You, you could be with your grandparents. You'd actually be older. You'd be older than them. You could be with your, your parents, your grandparents, great-grandparents, which is really trippy because some people actually saw them uh, in their unit. So it's up to you. And then you can choose what particular race you want to fight with. Uh, so normally pe people pit pick their own nationality that they like, okay? Uh, more recently, at the last expo, we had the Vikings come in. And the Vikings are uh, very good. So, uh, before I, uh, I have bodyguards of, uh, I have 100 uh, U.S. military. So these are all like super soldiers that we don't even know about that are there. I had 50 Russians. And these, I saved their lives and we materialized them after they got taken out. And then I had Chinese. Uh, maybe I have like about 25 Chinese. The Chinese, when I was doing this initially, I, I couldn't find them fighting. And I go, well, I'm seeing all these other, you know, the Africans and the Norwegians and the, 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 the French people and the North American Indians, you know, all of them were there. But the Chinese, I go, where's the Chinese at? So it took about two years and I finally saw them. The Chinese are very calculating. Okay, they don't get into battles or do anything unless they're going to win 100%. Then they do their strike and they're gone. So it might be like ninjas, I guess, something like that. Are, are you Chinese? <laughs> you know, you, you might understand what I'm talking about, but, but I couldn't find them. They're like way on the top watching until they had an opening to psh, and come and go. Now the Vikings are the opposite. Okay, the Vikings, you go... The aliens are over there. All they want to say, where are they? They're over there. They're gone. No fear. And they just cut off heads. And that's it. That's all they're, that's, that's it. Period. They, they don't, and see, when you do, when you do this, you're going to feel yourself have extra strength in your body. You may become a little more sarcastic to people because you have no fear at that point. And you're going to have probably about maybe two to three of your unit, which may, may be a dozen, we'll say, to 20, with you, but there'll be two to three as bodyguards for you here. So you're gonna, so if you're a meek person, meek and mild, you will lose that attribute because you're gonna be fighting and you don't take any shit, believe me. And, and that's the way it is. So I'll, I'll bring in what you want. You, you could, uh, uh, maybe I'll bring in five different uh, uh, races so you can sense them. So, uh, you're, you're Chinese, is that correct? Okay, here we go, bringing in the Chinese. So here they come. One, two, three, four, and five. They're, they're coming in the room here. There, they're here. When I first did this, the very first time, man, they came in with their, with their guns and their fatigues on and their, everything they had to fight battles, man, and the room got really heavy. Like they go, man, the darkness is here, you know? And then after doing this, they said, well, we ought to lighten ourselves up a little bit. So this is the Chinese. So you can feel the way their, their flavor is, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's the Chinese. I'll bring in the Africans. They're very, very tall. So one, two, three, four, and five. There, can you sense their presence? Okay, and I'll just ask you for the next race. Uh, I can bring in the Germans, I guess. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'll bring in uh, Swedish, I guess. One, two, three, four, and five. I'll bring in uh, North American, uh, say, Indians or South American Indians, both. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, Polish. One, two, three, four, and five. So I did this on one of the radio shows, I think. I probably went through like as many as I could, but you, you can feel the difference or slightly yeah. different, a different flavor, okay? Americans? <laughs> One, two, three, four, and five. Then I'll bring in the British. That they're, they're, they're different also. One, two, three, four, and five. So some are more diplomatic than others in a sense, okay? And Chinese? Chinese? Japanese. Japanese? One, two, three, four, and five. And then I'll bring in the, the Vietnamese. One, two, three, four, and five. Then I'll bring in Korea. One, two, three, four, and five. So there's kind of a sampling of the different energies there. Oh, the Vikings. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> the Vikings. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. That's the Vikings. Vikings kick butt. <laughs> they don't, they don't, uh, you know. What they did, I, I asked uh, maybe about, <laughs> get me warm, huh? Yeah, uh, I asked the Vikings what they do, maybe uh, about nine months ago. So they said, well, we'll take you with us. So I, I, I was watching, and they, they, they're invisible. They, they had two guys, two Vikings, going to one of the alien ships. They were walking all around the ship invisible. And then they reappeared at, uh, I guess, the, the, the control room, right, where the ship is, you know, you know, steering wheel and stuff, you know what I mean. Okay, and, and so they reappeared there, and they say, you better get out of here. And the aliens look at them, and they started to say something, and psh, off went their heads that quick, and they went through the whole ship. You know, you probably saw movies about Vikings fighting. You know, so just picture, like, 500 of these guys on, on an alien ship. Uh, you know, 10 seconds, they're gone. Okay? So, anyway... What you can, uh, I'll enlist you if you want. Yeah. Okay, so all you have to do is just say you want to be with whatever group you want to be with. And here we go. I'll bring the energy into you. Uh, it'll be around you. And uh, just say you want to enlist for that group. And they'll put you into boot camp. You might be out there in an hour fighting. You know, because they're out of time and you're going to get all your schooling. Now, sometimes people... They say, Ron, you know, it's a little too active for me. You know, I'm kind of losing a little bit of sleep at night, or I got a bruise on my arm. I don't want to. The stuff goes away, so don't panic if you have that. Most people say, man, I've been screwed up my whole life with aliens. I want to get even. Well, this is your chance, okay? <laughs> this is your only chance, okay, to do that. And so, but if you don't like it, you can always say, well, I want to be a cook, or I want to be that person stitching up the uniforms or something, and you can back down from the actual fighting. The one lady yesterday at the booth said, I want to be out on point. I want to be the first one out there to get them. <laughs> so anyway, but here we go. I'll bring in what, you, what you're requesting, and if you are enlisted and you want to change, you can. So here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, the energy's with you. And just say you want to uh, enlist. And that's all that it takes. Now, if you want to de-enlist, it gets too heavy for you, or you lose sleep or something, uh, just say, I want to de-enlist. I just can't do this any longer, and they'll let you go. Simple as that. It's done. Now, you're going to start to feel energy around you. And you may feel your bodyguards who are there to protect you right alongside of you right now. How many of you feel that? You feel that presence? Yep. yep. 
They're there. The bodyguards come as a part of the enlistment, or they were already there? Nope, they're there to help you. Just you're their unit. Even though you're physical here, you're part of their team, so they have to protect you. So you may find weird situations where maybe there's a confrontation or something, or you're walking down the hallway and now some people start parting ways, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? That's because they're there clearing the path for you. So this is a little confusing. In the new earth, there's no friction. But yeah, yeah, this, this won't be the new earth. This is, this is the old earth getting rid of aliens. This is cleanup. This is cleanup. Yep. They, they they watch out for you. Yeah, but maybe there could be an accident waiting to happen for you when your death barcode is going off, and they know about it, and they may move your foot to the brake pedal or something without you knowing it. You know, more conscious stuff like that happening. So, but you'll find out. You know, you can have a little more moxie when you wake up tomorrow morning, or you go to work. You know, and. You know, you used to do things to help other people, and now you don't want to do it or something, you know? You know? What do you mean, give me coffee? I don't want to, you know? Leave me alone. Get your own coffee, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you got them all, yeah. And you probably may not get messed with as much here because they're warding off, fighting off aliens. So maybe if they're trying to abduct you, they may not do that. Can't guarantee that, but it's one of the byproducts. They don't want to have you missing, you know? So how does the room energy feel? <laughs> it's, it's probably pretty intense. Do you get names? Do I get names? No. no we get uh, you, you could probably ask for some of their names, yeah. In your group, you know, it's possible. And like I said, you could be with your your parents, grandparents. You know, anybody who fought a war uh, will say is enlisted of your ancestors. So you might recognize the facial features, you know, as you look at it. You know, you know this is going to be a growing process. But you might go, hey, there's Uncle Fred over here. You know, he's in my unit. Oh yeah. So, what are you doing? He says, are you, are you on drugs or are you drunk? And the guy throws, if you want to see what you talk about. Yeah, this, this is in uh, San Mateo, yeah. He throws, I saw him not move at all. And he, he had no expression. And um, then all of a sudden he walked away to another table and started staring at the, you know, that, that, that booth. You know, like staring, but he started moving, but he wasn't. He's still frozen. Yeah, 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 what happened was uh, I, I went to the restroom and I met this man and he was probably about maybe he was tall like six eight or something you know and so he goes oh you're Ron I go yeah so I shook his hand went to the restroom came out and then he went to the booth and then he started to uh, heckle Angelie about something and he came over to the booth. So he's one of the time traveling soldiers, which he didn't probably know, but he came over there and confronted this guy and he took off. He just froze first. Yeah. The new guy had to froze. Yeah. Uh, okay, I know the freeze. That guy's out. He's frozen. Yeah, so, so I had this experience. I had, yeah, I had an experience in Mount Shasta. I'm on, on the main drag of Mount Shasta. Uh, and all of a sudden, the car pulls up next to me, and the person's Chinese. And he gets out of the car, and he wants to know how to go to the mountain. So I said, okay, yeah, it's over here. And I knew instantly that he was one of the soldiers. Because, you know, it was just really weird how he would ask me out about other people, you know, and to stop where I was. Yeah, he had energy. So I told him how to go. 
And so he got in his car and he, and he left. So, so you may meet people like that. For me, it was like really, well, this is cool. He's one of the soldiers, you know, and he just wanted to say hi. But he had to have a reason to say hi. So he needed directions. But yeah, you, you will have uh, incidents maybe like that or similar. You could, you know. But, but you are going to feel different tomorrow. You're going to get up and you're going to go, man, you know. I got, uh, well, I won't go into that, but <laughs> more wavels, you know. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, any questions? Yes. Um, which clearing do you recommend for increasing money or generating income? I have a prosperity clearing, but, but first do the emotional one. Definitely do that one first. So there are energies on the website that you may be drawn to, okay, but you need to clean out the emotions first. But there is a prosperity clearing on there. And I think I have a prosperity bundle. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. And, and a poverty, and, and it could be, there's also a slavery clearing. And the billboard. And the psychic, oh, the psychic billboard. Okay, so th that one's 20 bucks a month. Very, very good. And you want to probably use that with the self-empowerment clearing that I think is $30 or $60, but it lasts like six weeks. And it has like th maybe 36 inch issues, I think, with it. But the psychic billboard. So what happens is when people see you, you're radiating where you are in your life around you. They read that, just like a psychic reader would. That's really what they're reading, okay? And so with that, you want to do baby steps on what you're doing. So you have three entries. You have where you are now, okay? Uh, where you want to be, right? And then you have what other people are projecting onto you, which is really psychic attacks, but it's going on to you so you can't move forward. And then you have what the aliens are doing to you. So you just first put down where you are, where you want to go to, and then you watch uh, and sample where you are maybe every day or two. And then you change it slightly. So you're taking baby steps along the way because you have to own your reality. Okay? And so, uh oh, did it go out? Yeah, it's still on, yes. And, and so what you want to do is, is own your reality of where you are. So we'll just say that you're dealing with the poverty and you have no money. So you put, put on there that, you know, that you want to get some money. So you find a penny on the ground. Well, you've got to become that penny in your consciousness. So then at that point, you now are a penny and you're worth one cent. Before that, you're worth nothing. Okay, and then you put on there that you want to, you know, still have more money, we'll say, and so maybe in a week you find a nickel. Now you own that nickel because you have to own your reality in order to draw that to you. Does that make sense to you? So, well, that's weird, okay. So, so what happens is if you don't own that reality, then it's it's out of out of your realm, so you have to become your reality. And that's that's what the billboard does for you, and you just watch the outcome of what you put in there. How people are judging you. Say you want to get a job, well maybe the last people that you worked for really liked you, and they don't want you to have a job because they want you to go back to that old job that you had, and you don't want to be there. Okay, or maybe you got uh, your uh, your boss pissed off at you or something. And so they don't want you to ever have a job. So they're attacking you through your psychic billboard. So you go in to get a job to talk to somebody, and the person reads, oh, you know, from your last boss, the boss says, this person is a really crappy employee, right? So he reads it, and you're saying that you need a job, and he looks at you, and he goes, oh, crappy employee, right? I don't want to hire you. So you start changing it, and, and you keep moving forward with it. And then all of a sudden, if you do it enough, then you walk into your job, to a job interview, you know, I'm a great, great worker, I'm always on time, very punctual, I'm great at what I do. You walk in there, the person reads that, looks at you, takes the, takes the form, you're hired, doesn't even read it. You get the job. Okay. Yeah, are you getting it on your end?
Okay, one second here. Are we done? One, okay, yeah, I guess we could. Want to move out? I got 140 here. How long is this? Are we, are we done? <laughs> we're, we're done? We're past. Okay. Okay. So, so we, can, we can move out someplace if you want and talk. Let me get some tables someplace.